Good morning, viewers, and welcome again to the dynamic program, Times of Refreshing. I am Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph, and I am your TV hostess for this morning's program. Allow me the opportunity to enter your heart and your home and download a season of refreshing in your life. Before we meditate on God's word this morning, let us please take this opportunity to pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Great God, we exalt your precious name this morning. We thank you because this is the day that you have made, O oh God, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for spared and kept lives. We thank you, God, because we are alive and in the land of the living. And for this, we bless your holy name this morning. God, as we are about to meditate on your word, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the counselor, the one who was sent to lead us into parts of all truth. We invite his presence in our midst this morning and we ask the Holy Ghost to lead and to teach and to direct today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are continuing on the topic, our authority in prayer. And allow me the opportunity to again define the term authority. Authority, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means delegated power and influence based on recognized knowledge or expertise. And I'm saying again that we, the people of God, we have been given authority. We have been vested in all authority in prayer. We have been given power that when we speak to situation and we speak to issues in our lives, they must change. Amen? They must change. And this morning, I'm quickly jumping back to the benefits of this authority in prayer. One of the benefits of this authority in prayer is the ability through prayer to bring back dead people, dead issues, and dead situations. Let us go to Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 36 to 41. And it reads, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and armed deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, who when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent him unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he had come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning to the body said, Thabita, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when, she had, when he had called the saints, sorry, and widows, he presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And this is the kind of authority that I'm speaking about this morning. As believers, we have authority in prayer. We have power. We have been given power, delegated power. That when we speak to dead situations, they don't have any choice but to live, but to respond, but to change. And this morning I'm reading here in this discourse that this lady was sick and the Bible said she was sick unto death. She died. She was not asleep. She died. The Bible said she died and word was sent to the disciples to come. And the Bible said, Peter came and there were the people there weeping and showing the garments that she would have made in her lifetime. And the Bible said he put them up. 
out and he kneeled down and he didn't have a pity party and he didn't start to cry himself but the Bible declared that he prayed and turned to the body said Thabita which is interpreted Dorcas arise it's your time to live and the Bible said she lived. The Bible said she got up. She gave her hand to him and he lifted up. And this is the kind of authority I'm speaking about. P Peter spoke to this dead woman and he told her to arise. And she didn't arise next year or the next year after that or the next month, immediately her dead body was brought back to life. Her feeble body received strength. And we as a people, we ought to know that we have the same power. We have been given the same authority in prayer. Believers, we are powerful people. Many times we live beyond, below our ability and our capacity. But I'm here to tell you this morning that as a believer, you have authority in prayer. I have authority in prayer. We have the ability together to speak to the situations of our lives, even though they might be dead. And we have the ability to see them live again. That's the kind of power that we possess as a people. We ought not to live as defeated people. We ought not to live mediocrity lives. We ought not to live like that. We ought to live and walk and operate in the sphere for which we were called. Jesus said he has given us authority in prayer. He was the man of, he was a man of prayer. And he delivered unto us the same instruction that men ought always to pray and not to cease. In season and out of season, we have authority. Come on, let us begin to use that authority. It makes no sense that we have power and authority to do a thing and we are not doing it. We are wasting the skill. Let us not waste our skill. And that which God would have imparted to us, let us not allow it to lay and we waste it away. Let us speak to our situations and see them live again in the name of Jesus. And I'm continuing. We have the ability to speak healing, wholeness, and wellness over sick people, over our own body, and over that of our own household. We have that ability. Let us go to Acts 28. Hallelujah. We're still in Acts. Acts 28, reading from verse 7 to 9. Hallelujah. And it reads, in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publicus, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed, and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Again, we are seen by prayer. The Bible said, Paul entered in this man. His father was sick of a fever and of a bloody flux. And the Bible said he entered in. And he just didn't enter in and watch him pitifully. He didn't enter in and operate in a sphere like he was helpless. The Bible said he entered in and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him. We have the ability to lay hands on our own bodies and receive healing. We have the ability to lay hands on our children and on our husbands and on our wives and on members of our own household and see them receive their healing. That's the kind of power and authority that we possess as believers. This morning I came by to encourage you and to let you know that you have been given delegated power. You have the authority to speak to sickness. 
and sickness will turn to healing and wholeness. We have that authority. The Bible said when the news was noised abroad, people with all kind of diseases came and likewise they were healed. And likewise they were healed through prayer. Through prayer and waiting on God, we have the ability to walk into places that you will see uh, sick people and you have the ability to lay hands and as the Bible says, and see them recover. Is there any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. And as you call for them, the instruction is that you lay hands and you believe by faith because the Bible still says that healing is the children's bread. He still declares in his word that he wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. God wants us to walk in good health. He does not delight in sickness as some will have it. Jesus desires that our bodies function in wholeness, that our mind function in wholeness, that we walk about in our right mind and in soundness of mind. He does not desire that we ask, that we can become sick people. He has given us the authority that even when we become sick, because there will be times that you will be ill or people around you will be ill. He has given us as believers, as blood washed people, as spirit filled people. He has given us the ability to lay hands on the sick and believe by faith and see them recover in the name of Jesus. Why don't you use the authority that you have been given? Why don't you use that delegated power that have been given from your commander and chief? It's important that you recognize who you are today. We are not a defeated people. We are not victims of our situations. We are victors. We are triumphant in this life. We have the final say. We know how the story will end. Hallelujah. I am continuing this morning. We also have the ability to open locked doors and prison doors, literally, and in our lives and in the lives of others. We are still in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. Acts 16, reading from verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. And brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword. Hallelujah. The Bible said they were put in prison because the, 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 the nobles and the commanders of the day thought they were threats. Because they were doing all these mighty acts. And the Bible said they were cast into prison. But I thank God for the power of prayer. The Bible said at, at midnight, when everything is still and everybody is sleeping, sometimes God will call upon us to pray. The Bible said and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. 
They did not form a pity party. They didn't cry and say, well, we are hopeless. We are in trouble. We are never going to get out. The Bible said they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, my God, there are times in our life that things are going to happen to us suddenly. Look out for your suddenly moment. The Bible said, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. Let me inform you that there are some things in your life that God wants to shake. There are some stuff in your life that have been there for years. Let me inform you by the Spirit this morning that God wants to shake them at their very foundation. He wants to shake them. And immediately all the doors were open and every man's band were loose. This is the kind of authority we have. We are not a defeated people. Let me reiterate that. The Bible said Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. They prayed. We have authority in prayer. When we can't do anything else as a people, we can storm the throne of grace. We can call upon our daddy. We can call our father. We can call upon our commander and chief. When we can't do anything else, there are times in our life it might seem hopeless, but I thank God for the avenue of prayer, the ability to fall on my knees and call on Jesus. I thank God for the avenue, for the open door, for the delegated power that he has given to me that I could run into him in the time of trouble and I could find grace and mercy and strength when I need it. The Bible said Paul and Silas prayed. Sometimes we are locked in some prisons, not literal prison with bars, but there are some things in our life that sometimes want to imprison us, that sometimes wants to build up gates and steel bars around our life and keep us there that we will not progress in God. This morning I declare to the power of the Spirit of God at every prison door and every prison gate that wants to keep you in prison, I declare broken in the name of Jesus. I declare those prison doors open and allow you to walk into your purpose in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is keeping you back from fulfilling your purpose and calling in God. I don't know what is your prison. What are the prison doors that are keeping you locked in? Let me inform you that the, this prison door can be open and you can be allowed to walk free. You just need to understand the kind of power and authority that have been vested in you as a believer. And you got to use it. You need to use it. You need to operate in the high calling by which you were called. The Bible said we have a high calling. We have a holy vocation. We are not ordinary people. We need to operate in that sphere and that dimension. In the name of Jesus. If we want to live a successful Christian life, we cannot leave out prayer. We cannot leave it out. It's the key that locks up at night. And it's the key that will open the doors in the morning. Prayer is vital. It opens prison doors as we saw in the scripture. And it can open the prison doors that have been closed you in, that have boxed you in in your life, that have enclosed you, that you will go this far and no further. Prayer could break it down this morning. Hallelujah. Let us continue. Prayer has the ability to change God's mind. What are you saying this morning, minister? Yes, prayer has the ability to change God's mind. Let us go to 2 Kings 20. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Kings 20. 
Thank you, Lord. Reading from verse 1 to 6. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake. And for my servant David's sake, can God change his mind? Yes, through prayer. The Bible said that Hezekiah was sick and he was sent a death sentence saying, Hezekiah, get ready. Be in preparation because you will die and not live. And I like the mindset of Hezekiah. Hey, he didn't call the funeral home. He didn't call and start to make preparation. He didn't begin to, he didn't begin to write his eulogy. The Bible said that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And he prayed unto God. And I like the prayer of Hezekiah. The Bible said he reminded God. Sometimes we need to remind God. The Bible said he reminded God. He said, God, remember I walked in truth. I had a perfect heart. I lived uprightly in your sight. And the Bible said Hezekiah wept so. And the word came again. God changed his mind concerning Hezekiah. The Bible said the word came. And it came to Isaiah. And the, the word said, go back and tell Isaiah this. Hezekiah, this sorry that I, he's not going to die. The Bible said, tell him that the God of David, thy father, he did three things concerning you. He said he has heard your prayers. When you pray, God will hear you. He said, tell Hezekiah for me that I've heard his prayer. I've seen his tears and I will heal. Hallelujah. When we pray, there is the blessed assurance that God will hear our prayer. There is the blessed assurance that he will see our tears. And finally, he will heal. He will heal. And I thank God because he has the ability to give Lani up. He has the ability to lengthen years. The Bible said, he said to Hezekiah, I will add my God. I will increase. I will lengthen your days, Hezekiah. I will add unto you 15 more years. This is an awesome God. This is a mighty God. He said, I will add unto thy days 15 more years. Hezekiah, this is because of prayer. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He got into a place with God and he reminded God he did not write his eulogy. He did not look for his coffin. He looked to God. The Bible said he turned his face to the wall and he cried unto the God of David. And the God of David that hears our prayers still answers. He said, I've heard, I've seen, and I will heal. 
Mighty God, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what, what is your situation this morning. But let me encourage you that God has the ability to hear and to see and to heal. He has the capacity to add more years to your life. Let me encourage you this morning. Whatever situation you're going through, if you're sick this morning, Jesus is still the healer. He's still the balm in Gilead. He's still the great physician. He still has the ability to touch and to heal. He did it for Hezekiah. He added 15 more years to his life, and he can do it for you. Just open your heart and receive that word this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Open your heart and receive that word from God today. He has the ability. Nobody according to the songwriter do me like Jesus. He's still the mighty healer. What he did for Hezekiah. Let me inform you viewer that he can also do it for you. He can do it for you. You have the authority in prayer. You have been vested with all authority. You have been given delegated power from the, your commander and chief, my commander and chief. He has given us power that we could run through storms and troops through prayer. We could, uh, we could wake up death issues and death situation. We could speak to sick bodies. We can change the mind of God through prayer. You are not defeated in this walk. You are triumphant in this Christian walk. Even though at times you might feel discouraged and depressed, let me encourage you this morning that God is still on the throne and he still reigns King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I will stop here today. But before I go, I always like to take the opportunity to pray for my viewers. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise today. God, we lift up your mighty name this morning. We thank you, God, for your word that went forth. We pray, great God, that it would accomplish that which you were sent to do and that it would not return void. We pray, great God, as your people would listen and they would view morning by morning that they will understand the power of prayer, that they will not live defeated lives, God, but they would rise up and know that they have been given power and authority in prayer. They will rise up and know that they can speak to dead bodies and to sick bodies, oh God, and they can receive healing for themselves and for those of the household, even on the street, even people on their jobs. My God, they can lay hands and they can see them recovered and whole and well in the name of Jesus. Cause us as a people, great God, to use the authority that we have been vested with in the name of Jesus. Cause us to rise up and to understand the power that we have as believers in the name of Jesus. So great God, I commit the viewers again today. I pray great God that they will have a prosperous week in the name of Jesus. Great God, bless them in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I am Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph, and it was indeed a privilege being here with you this morning. But as I go, let me extend the blessings of God to you. Let me inform you that you are blessed and highly favored. So until we meet again, may God bless you, bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.